Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to Talk and Tea Time with Dr. G. We will be discussing today pandemic in the pews. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I don't remember how it started. Oh. Oh Our back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Okay, here we go, throw it! <laughs> yeah! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. Welcome back to Talking Tea Time with Dr. G. I am so honored to have with me today on this panel to discuss Pandemic in the Pews. To my left, I have Pastor John C. Williams from the Purpose Church. And to my right, I have Bishop Antoine Jackson from the Equation Church. And last but not least, Pastor Ron Young from Impact Church STL. Welcome you all to Talking Tea Time with Dr. G. Well, welcome. welcome. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So today, I really would like for you all to share with us what does this look like, pandemic in the pews. We've discussed you know, pre-pandemic, in the pandemic, now it's post-pandemic. So what does that look like as pastors, pandemic in the pews? Pastor Ron. Figuring out, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that's the short end of a long story. Figuring out. I know uh, this past Sunday, I was talking to uh, our church, and I said, as, as much experience as my pastor had and his pastor had, what they didn't have was trying to figure out how to pass in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. right. And that was an experience and is an experience that no one can teach you. Uh, unless it happens again in yeah. a lifespan. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us, I mean, and me personally, it's just one of those things of trying to navigate, listen to God, listen to common sense that God gave you, make your mistakes, recover from them, and uh, trying to galvanize all of us and keep us safe and have the mindset that uh, normalcy, whatever that's going to look like, is around the corner and then being carried. So that's from our end. Okay. Really I could definitely piggyback off of that. Uh, what Pastor Ron uh, just, just said, because like you say, we never been through it. Something that we have never experienced. Even the previous mentors that we have in our life probably had never, ex had never experienced the pandemic that most of us pastors have been through. And, and as young pastors, um, those that have just probably birthed and those that was uh, just started and, and got in the seat as pastors, um, it was, you had to be creative, right. you know. <laughs> some of us wasn't used to, you know, the technology that we had to, you know, do the live streams, the YouTube, the Facebook, as other ministries have done. And so for me, it was an eye opener for me. It was, I see now that the normalcy is almost at the door, is almost there knocking. But uh, I think that when you have a group of, of people that used to having that comfortable coming in every Sunday and what they used to be. And now you're coming in and now you're speaking to almost a different congregation every Sunday, mm -hmm. not the same congregation you used to. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's an eye opener and, and it's a learning experience and uh, keeps you thinking and, and, and trying to get ideals and stay engaged with your uh, congregation as of today. All right, Bishop. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> God, God bless you. God, you God bless know. you. 
I don't know. This is going to be one of those things I feel like I have to look back over. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, as the church changes and right. we get back to whatever normalcy or whatever new normal is going to be. Right. I think I have to look back over and be like, oh, okay, well, you did that right or you did that wrong because right. I have no clue. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really mm -hmm. don't. You, you know, too. it's like you just show up every single week. You want to make sure that you're meeting the needs of people. I know, that especially in this p production standpoint, just trying to make sure that all that stuff is on point. Right. But then, you know, making sure that you're ministering the right word so that people can have the encouragement that they have, that they need, but also grow at the same time while meeting their practical needs, while mm -hmm. managing the building. Right. Mm -hmm. while, you know, it's like, I don't That's know. It. I just feel like I'm just doing what I, what I know to do. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm just trusting God every single week with what I feel like he puts in my heart to do. Okay. Now, all of you all are back in the buildings. Am I correct? I am. Yes, partially, yes. okay, partially. Pastor Ron, partially. partially. Yeah. So when you say partially, or so does that mean like virtually at home, but then people are also coming to the building? Yeah, so for us, we normally will run two services, 9 and 11, 15, and we just came back in June. So we alter it to fit what we think the need is according to the data that we've kind of semi-collected from our congregation, i.e., how many people, when we weren't in, how many people did we have watching online? How many people mm -hmm. were giving? How many people? So that gave us information and intel to say, well, based off this, we don't need to run two services when we come back. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we can, because of the production of what it takes for us, in particular as a ministry, to get the stream out, we even moved the early service a half an hour earlier. And then the protocols that we had to put in place. So for us, it's an abbreviated of what we, abbreviation of what we used to do. Okay. So that's why it's partial. Okay. Um, so we're not running it like we were before, but we are in at okay. a smaller capacity. All right, Bishop. Yeah, we're just doing once a month in person, but we're fully, we're fully virtual. So the virtual mm -hmm. space has been great for us because we've been able to venture out with apps, websites, new mm -hmm. web, you know, all of that stuff to really reach people in, um, in virtual space. All right. Yeah, same Pastor. as us. We, we do online and also in person mm -hmm. every Sunday. And so it, it works out. We are back. We've been back since uh, Easter of 21 and uh, since April. And so the normalcy and, and, and the congregation is steady coming back gradually. Uh, the ones that was online, now they're in the seats now. And so... We're just looking forward to it, taking the time. But like I'm like Bishop, we don't know what we do. <laughs> right. We don't know what we are doing. So Lord help us. how do you all plan to address church growth? Because I, I you know, I know that's big. You know, you want you want your, your congregations to grow. So how do you address that during this post pandemic time? I'll start with Bishop. I love that question. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Yeah, so like for me, I, I think that the model is going to have to be about maturity yeah. more than it is butts in the seats. Because right. mm -hmm. I think if anything, the pandemic showed us that having a whole bunch of butts in the seats didn't really mean a lot when the pandemic hit. Come uh. on, come on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, is I, I, I appreciate the fact that there are people there that we can talk to, but I think that if you don't have believers maturing and knowing how to actually handle what happens in the world, then to have a whole bunch of butts in the seats don't mean anything to me. So I think that I would rather the quality of people change right. than the quantity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what did you? What what happened to you during the pandemic? Did right. you mature as a person? Yeah. Did your faith with Jesus, you know, what I'm saying, get stronger or tighter, or did you drift further away from him? So that's more so how I address it. Like, I, I want the quality, the character of a Christian to change more than just how many people are there in the seats. Okay, Pastor Ron. I mean, for me, don't hear what I'm not saying. I hear this, what you're not saying. That <laughs> Come this, on. Because this could come off crash. Right. Okay, all right. All right. But in relation to church growth in this period, man, I at first I was putting too much pressure on myself. Now I've taken Guilty. that pressure off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because what I've discovered, I've said this a million times, you can have church a worship, rather, in someone's living room, they go come out their bedroom. Right. Mm -hmm. and, it, and at first, I was saying, how, yes, do, how do how do I get them out the bedroom? How do I, 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 
and it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> no. Lord, go. I'm going to do what you told me to do. <laughs> yeah. And let Holy Spirit yes. add, convict hearts or yes. whatever. And we go roll. And if you go hop on this train, you go hop on the train. If you not, you not. If you go leave, you go leave. If you yes. go be a part, you go be a part. We are doing and providing what we know to do. And so I'm just going to believe that if I plant somebody else's water, God will give the increase. But because during that pandemic, it was one of those things of, all right, how do we hustle to keep the people and this, right, that, and the other? Right. And I think we all ran into that. And yeah. to some extent, there's some relativeness that goes with that because you don't want to lose members. But right. at the mm-hmm. same time, sometimes I think in this period, we put too much pressure on ourselves to try to keep people. Okay. All right. And so, man, I'm just done with it. <clears throat> okay, Pastor JC. That is awesome. What Bishop said, what a, a pastor just said, that we have spent so much time and, and have got winded by trying to keep people. And we look up, we find ourselves, we are wore out, tired, and trying to pump everybody up every Sunday to come. And I just realized that, you know, it's the maturity of them, where mm-hmm. their Christian faith, their, where they're level at, you know, their experience, you know, how their relationship with Christ has a lot to do with it. You know, cause you, you can have a lot of people in their seats, but that don't mean nothing until they get to the understanding that they are the church. Right. They just come into a building. <laughs> the bill, we, uh, the church is a living organism, and right. that's what we have to understand. That even though we're not in the church, hey, I can still praise God and give God mm-hmm. thanks where I'm in my living room, you know. Right. But when we have the mindset that hey, when that growth, that mindset, when we come in and hey, I love God, I have that relationship. It's part of a person's relationship, their maturity in Christ, as Bishop said. When you're dealing with the growth of the church, you know, that means that I don't have to worry about who coming to church mm-hmm. or, or who going to be at church. Right. Hey, I'm coming because I love God yeah, <laughs> yeah. because of my relationship right. with God. No matter who show up, I don't even need the praise team. Just give me the word. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know, I don't need the organ. Just mm-hmm. give me the word. Mm-hmm. I don't need the drums. Just give me the word. That, that's that growth where you don't need those material things, those normalcy things that we used to. Because this pandemic should have got us to the point of that. I don't even need all that when I think. Yeah. Of the goodness. <laughs> that's where we should be at. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the mindset. <laughs> and can I, and can I add to what, what he, what both of them just said from a personal experience, man, we bought new camera systems. We <laughs> bought, I mean, I, I'm talking about Lord thousands of dollars. We didn't paint it the sanctuary, <laughs> put up lights, this, that, and the other. And we still got some people who ain't never turned that's on our roster still ain't turned mm-hmm. on the stream. And and from the leadership perspective, it's right. like, yo, we didn't do this for us. Right. Yes. We yes. Right. And we, we we did this to to engage you to right. to to use this as a means. And you you still didn't turn on the stream right. for, mm-hmm. for a whole month. Right. And it's like I throw my hands up right. because at the end of the day, when you're talking about growth, you can't grow somebody who don't want to grow. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like Jesus when He said, "Come follow me." He said, "Well, let me go bury my mother and father first. Uh, right. You ain't fit. Right. We gonna roll right. and let the you should let the dead bury the dead." Mm-hmm. That's why I said earlier, I ain't trying to sound crass, right. mm-hmm. but if Jesus had that perspective, we better learn from it. Right. So, with the time that we have left, I'm going to ask each of you all this question. And I'm going to start with the bishop. Bishop, how have you grown as a pastor during the pandemic? I have grown in my perspective as a pastor, not neglecting myself for the ministry. Jesus died for it. I don't have to. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I have learned that I can do, I do what I can and I let God do the rest. Mm -hmm. I've adjusted in my pastoral philosophy and knowing that my responsibility is to be there for those that need me and to, and to not cast my pearls before the swine. <laughs> so I have learned that there are people that are hungry for my voice and those that aren't. And oftentimes, in, time, in times past, we would spend more time trying to get more people on the team instead of feeding the hungry that are there. Yeah. And so I focus my attention toward feeding those that are hungry. Uh, and for me, I've learned that I was just out of balance mm-hmm. with as much as I tried to prioritize my life, I'm not a good pastor if I'm not a healthy person. Mm. Okay. And so I've just learned now to make sure that I'm as healthy as I can be and then I show up and then I let God use me to bless the people. All right, Pastor Ron. I think for me, I have learned, 
I have grown in the in the sense of recognizing my failures as mm -hmm. pastoring mm -hmm. in this. And I say that to say growing and creating a vein to create and grow and disciple more leadership. I think I've taken on way more than what I should have during this pandemic right. versus having established faithful leaders that are committed. Now we do have some, but I'm talking about more. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've learned from this, like, yo, we better be raising up some that can help and yes. some errands and hers to raise mm -hmm. your arms more than ever before. So I, I've grown personally in that way and saying, let's get some textbook, learn and grow. All right, well, Pastor JC. I have learned through this pandemic coming off of it for myself, you know, hey, learn to share it, give it to somebody else. You know, you can't do everything because that's the mindset coming into birth in a church three years. Your mindset, you want to do, you want this, you want to make sure that the eyes cross the T's. And during this pandemic, I have learned to take the load off, you know, allow my uh, leadership team to be able to handle things like they should. And, and I thank God for the leadership team that he has given me. And also, like you say, you can't do his work if you're not healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not healthy and you want to make sure that, hey, and also I learned to be appreciative during this pandemic. Yeah. Learn to be appreciative of what yeah. God has done for us. Because sometimes we, as, as pastors, we, we take things for granted. We do a lot of things and, and trying to be, uh, as they say, pump people up to come to church and mm -hmm. preaching. And, you know, you look back and reflect, hey, you got to look things from God's perspective and make sure you're, make sure you are hearing God's voice and, and enhance the spirit of discernment on this, on this, uh, this ministry of pastoring. And I just thank God for that he have allowed me to have that sensitive ear to his word, to be able to, hey, step back and let your leadership team handle it. Okay, so in two minutes, can you tell us what's next for the Purpose Church? Well, what's next for the Purpose Church right now, we are headed into, uh, we bought property over during the pandemic and now we're in the process of heading into uh, the bank and getting ready to break ground on, on a 100 Amen. by 80 Amen. building that will be covering the sanctuary and the fellowship hall. And okay. it'd be more than a ministry. It, 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 it'd be outreach that we'll be doing. Okay. And so that's where we're headed to right now. All right, Pastor Ron, where you headed? We uh, just got a, the Lord blessed us with a new property and we'll just try to move into it before the end of the year. Amen, amen, Bishop. Well, I want new properties, so. <laughs> hey, hey, let's touch and agree, let's right. touch and agree. Let's touch and agree. New properties are done, 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 done. done. <laughs> but no, we're doing once a month, so we're looking back to get, get into more regular uh, services starting in January. Oh, okay. And just kind of expanding our church overall. I'm just ready to get back to it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what's next for us. Awesome. You're healthy and no mask and no yes, 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 yes. No you social distancing, yes. hugging, all yes. of that that we used the to do. Of yes. The yes. Yes. yes, yes. The foot on the gas. The foot on the gas. Well, listen, uh, pastors, I really thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to stop by talking tea time with Dr. G. And what I would like to do with this platform is when we come together, let's let's talk about things that people need to hear. But not only people that go to church, people that may want to go to church, but I don't want to go to church because of such and such, such right. and such. Let's create an atmosphere where they want to tune in and they want to hear what you all have to say. And so for my audience, I want you all to know that this will be a monthly segment, spiritually speaking, where I will sit down and talk with these men of God. And then after the episode airs, we're going to do a Facebook Live where you will be able to join us and you can ask questions and you can be transparent. And I promise you that they are going to be transparent and give you some transparency. Okay parents answers I promise so pastor you have one minute can you just encourage someone on the camera I just, just want to encourage camera. someone that don't throw in the towel put your faith and hope in God that's it okay Bishop you know, in in life you have plenty of opportunity to stay disconnected from your source and my hope is that you stay connected to God because that's where your life your hope and your strength will come from Okay, Pastor Ron. just remember the Lord is faithful Yes. Yes, he yes, is. He is. Yes, he is. So thank you all again for stopping by talking tea time with Dr. G. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. When I return, Dr. G will be sharing one of her favorite teas. We'll be right back. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. 
The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Talking Tea Time with Dr. G, and I am sharing one of my favorite teas. This is Earl Grey Tea, and this was recommended to me by my beautiful cousin, Monisha Williams, and she is also a sponsor of Talking Tea Time with Dr. G. So, Monisha, thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed drinking this. Very smooth, nice taste. I drank it warm. So, again, that is Earl Grey Tea. And this was recommended by my cousin, Monisha Williams. I still have some time left with the pastors. Mm -hmm. So we are approaching Thanksgiving season and the holiday season. So Bishop Ron, I'm sorry. Oh, I called you Bishop. That's Maybe okay. I'm speaking glory. something. Glory. Hey, glory. People in my church call me Bishop. Hey, really glory. Well. Bishop. <laughs> Pastor Ron. Pastor Ron. <laughs> Pastor Ron, can you take two minutes and just tell us some things that you're thankful for coming out of this pandemic? Well, first of all, there's one thing that I'm thankful for that's streamlined throughout my whole life. I am thankful for the forgiveness of Jesus. Yes. Um, you know, I know me, mm -hmm. and, and y'all yeah. know enough about me, some more than others. <laughs> uh, and so I, I need that grace every day, man. And listen. so I'm thankful yeah. for the mercy of God in my life. It's sufficient. It is. It yes. is super. It's sufficient. Super. Yes. And, uh, you know, my family, oh, our man. church, beautiful friends like yes. the three of you all that I have in my life um, and so you know just just to be able to wake up every day uh, even with the life when mm -hmm. life is life yes uh, and and just still be able to survive yes. in this world so right. that's it okay. Pastor JC uh, Dr. G, I, I'm just thankful for a lot of things that God has done coming out, like you say, coming out of this pandemic. Just thankful for just God being faithful to me, mm. waking up, exhaling, inhaling. And uh, thank God for my family, my church family, and like you say, the people that he have surrounded me with, my circle. And I just thank God just for breath of life daily. Because, like you say, just being a forgiving God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> we yes. haven't been good all the time. Mm -hmm. Haven't kept all these commandments. No. <laughs> Wanted to throw in the towel, but I just thank him for his grace and his mercy. All right. Amen. That's okay. what it's all about. All right. Close us out, Bishop. Listen, I'm just thankful for the fact that I survived the pandemic. That I survived COVID. Uh, my daughter is killing it at school. I have roof over my head. My church is fine. I mean, I'm thankful for the fact that I get to even participate in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there are plenty of people mm. that didn't make it. Yeah, yes. yeah that's good. That's, that. good. that's good. That's yeah. good. They didn't make it. So I'm ultra grateful for an opportunity to chart the course forward. I really right. am. Right. 
So I am grateful for so many things. Uh, I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to form the relationships here with you all. I'm grateful for that and thankful. Thankful that my family is well. But the one thing that I can really just say that I'm thankful for is that God is faithful. Yes. Oh my God, when yes. I was faithless, he was still faithful faithful yes. and so I just bless him for again giving me this platform to bring this information to the forefront so that's what I'm thankful for so thank yes I, I, I'm sorry I gotta say I'm thankful for you being who you are oh, and using you. this platform you. to spread God's love because a lot of people wouldn't do that and you are heralding that from behind this desk so thank you thank, thank you, you so much I appreciate you all so thank you all for tuning in to Talking Tea Time with Dr. G, and I will see you next time. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay positive. Bye-bye. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We have this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet. And this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's gonna be cool. When I retired from the Navy, I found myself in a void in my life that had been filled by the people that I served with. Tommy really brought an important factor to my life. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat.